Hey coders and welcome to episode 0.4 of our Google Apps Script course. In this video we're going to be talking about the differences between bounded, standalone, and web app scripts. So there's three primary script types, if you will, in app script. There are web app scripts, container bounded scripts, and standalone scripts. And I've created this Venn diagram to highlight some of the key advantages and similarities between these three scripts. So let's just start at the top, the web apps. So this serves front end inter interfaces on the internet. And it also utilizes the methods do get and or do post. So you need do get or do post in your script for it to be considered a web app. And a web app is basically serving a user interface over the internet that can interact with your script. So we'll get more to that as we go later on the course, but that's a web app. Next you have something called a container bounded script. And these scripts are directly connected with some of the Google products such as spreadsheets or docs. And so they cannot be found on Google Drive directly. They have to be accessed through the, the container, which is say your spreadsheet or your doc or your slides. But, however, these slides or these scripts do have access to special functions such as on open, you get active, and you can create custom functions. Obviously, this isn't all encompassing, but it does it does have access to more of these special functions. Next, you have standalone, and standalone is what we're going to be using for the majority of the videos on this course. Basically, it's just vanilla app script. It's the way to go for beginners, very simple to get started. Each of these standalone scripts are files in and of themselves so that you can find them directly through Google Drive. So let's start to see some of the similarities. So between a web apps and standalone, you have privacy of code. So again, if you give somebody edit access to a container bounded uh, script, or I mean, if you give them edit access to a spreadsheet or a slides, they can go directly from that container into your script. So they can read all the code and everything. Also, even if you put it on view access, so if you give someone just view access, they can make a copy of that of that spreadsheet or whatever, and then they they will become the owner of that copy, and then they will be able to see all your code. So there's not so much privacy. Um, in between web apps and container bounded, usually these scripts are meant to be run with the user. So usually as the user is interacting with this user interface, something like if they open the spreadsheet or if they open your your web app over the internet usually the script is meant to be run as the user is interacting with it and that's not the case for standalone scripts so for container bounded and standalone scripts usually all of the code that you write is going to be backend app script or javascript you're not going to be writing any html or well, only on a very very few occasions will you be doing it and no CSS involved, only, I mean, only very few occasions. So all of it is nearly backend. And then when you take all three of these scripts, you're on a power level of over 9,000. So again, this is just some of the differences and, and similarities. Let's just go quickly over them in the app script dashboard so that we can get a better feel for them all. In our last episode, when we created our very first project using app script, Really what we were doing was we were creating a standalone script. So since we already covered that in the last episode, let's just look at how to make a web app and a bounded script in this episode. So the process to make a web app starts out exactly the same as a standalone script. You would go to your app script dashboard, you would click on new project, and then you would be presented with a view that looks something like this. You would have your default function, my function already displayed, but in order to indicate that you would want it to be a web app, you would have to include one or two more functions. So those functions are do get and do post. So do get is whenever anyone, whenever a user makes a get request to your web app, this function will fire. Do post is whenever anyone will make a post request to your web app, this function will fire. Or whatever is in the, the brackets will fire. So you can include more functions, that's totally fine. These would be helper functions basically. Again, this is server side code. So if you wanted to access the spreadsheet app or any other service, you would include those here, and you can include as many as you'd like. 
And also, again, you do not have to include both do get and do post. You can just have one. That's totally fine. But when you're ready to publish your web app, you would go up here into this menu that says publish. And then you would hit deploy web app. You'd get a pop-up that looks something like this. And if it's your first time, you would see a button down here that says deploy. But since I've already deployed this, uh, I have update. So some of the options that you can select are project version, and this is basically the version of the app if you want to make multiple versions, and execute the app as. So you can execute whenever a user accesses your web app, you can have your account run on their behalf, or I mean, your account run on your behalf, and or you could select user accessing the web app. So this would be the user accessing the web app use their account. So why you would want to use this say is if you are connecting to a spreadsheet and that spreadsheet is private to you only, but you want data from the users to be put in that spreadsheet, you would say execute the app as me and then and then users would input their, input their data, but then your account would access that spreadsheet and then it would be totally fine because that spreadsheet is private to only you. Anyways, I'll just select that for now. Who has access to the app? So in this in this scenario, we have three options, only myself. I would not select this or I would not recommend it unless truly only yourself was accessing the web app. And then we have anyone. So this is anyone with a Google account or a Gmail account. And then the last option is anyone even anonymous. So this is anyone whether they have a Gmail or not. So I'm just going to hit that for now. And then again, if it's the first time, you would see a button that says deploy right here and you'd click it. Since I've already deployed it, I'm going to select this URL. I'm going to go there and this is our web app. So again, this is very simple, but I just want to showcase that this was possible. Anytime any user would go to this URL, they'll be presented with this web app. So that's web apps. Now let's take a look at bounded scripts. So bounded scripts, again, are a part of the container as a whole. So what is a container? A container is either a spreadsheet, a document, a slides, a forms, and I think also Google Sites is considered a container, but no one really uses bounded scripts for Google site Sites. Usually they just make a web app like we did here and then possibly embed that code in the Google Sites. Anyways, for spreadsheets, docs, or, or slides, you would need to go up into this menu right here and there'll be a button called tools and then you select script editor and then it you are presented with a view that looks exactly the same as if it was a standalone script so let's title our project right off the bat and say bounded script example and then again, bounded scripts have access to a little bit more functionality when def when you can define functions. So say we wanted to define on open. So this is a function name that is reserved for whenever a user opens this spreadsheet. So whenever they open this spreadsheet, this function will automatically run. If you make on open on a standalone script, it will just be a normal function, but since this is a bounded function, on open means something now. Also, you can say make custom functions. So if you wanted a function, say print high. Again, this is for the spreadsheet. And then say just, I don't know, return high. And then you save it. Basically, when you type in like any other function, like sum, you would say print high, and there you go, hi. So this is not a Google function, this is my own function that I just made with the bounded script. So again, we'll get more into all these things in later episodes. There's one more thing I wanna show you, and that is accessing bounded scripts through Google Forms. So there's no, there's no tools uh, menu option for a Google Form, but to get to your bounded script editor, you would just go into this more three dots and then here it is right here, script editor. So you just click into that and then you would get your own bounded script. 
So let's actually, one more thing is let's look at our apps group dashboard now. And here is the project that we just made and it's in its spreadsheet container. So that's our container right here. That's, that's our spreadsheet. And you can tell that it's a bounded script because it has this little app script icon, but then it's encapsulated within the spreadsheet. So that is standalone scripts, web apps, and bounded scripts. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.